All right, guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about another real estate video trend, which is called the cinematic roll. At least that's what I like to call it. I'm sure you've seen this in lots of real estate videos and movies and all sorts of types of productions. But today we're going to be breaking down this trend into three different ways you can use it and get into all the specifics, making it really, really simple for you guys to take this home and implement it into your workflow. So. Thanks so much for joining. Now let's get into it. So step number one, which I know you guys have never seen me do on this channel before is we are going to switch our gimbals to FPV mode instead of pan follow mode, which is what I normally use for basically everything. So this is going to allow us to use that roll axis and instead of having a perfectly level shot, we're gonna be able to tilt it a little bit this way tilt a little bit this way and make a dramatic, a little bit more creative and interesting shot to change things up in our video production. So as far as gimbal settings go, I like to keep mine always at slow. So everything's slow, make sure your gimbal's really balanced properly before you start doing all this stuff because it will keep your movements nice and steady and smooth looking. So slow, FPV mode, steady movements, then we're ready to go. <laughs> as far as camera settings go, I use 60 frames per second for this because it will allow it to be as slow as I want to in my editing. And I think for this technique, the slower the better because it is gonna be a lot more watchable as part of a real estate video and a lot more manipulate-able because <laughs> You can add a speed ramp or something, have part of it be slow motion, speed up, and then transition to the next shot, all sorts of stuff like that. And a quick note, if you are filming in 60 frames per second, you want to pick up the pace quite a bit for your speed of like how fast you're walking, how fast you're doing your gimbal movements, because 40% um, playback speed is really slow. If you're moving really slow already, it's just gonna be like, barely, 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 barely moving. So you see on the behind the scenes shots how fast I moved and um, obviously you can decide what you wanna do creatively on your own. So now let's get into the three different applications that you can use this for. Obviously there's infinite number of applications, but these are the three that we're gonna be talking about in this tutorial. So. Number one is the simplest, which is a detail shot. So for this, you wanna be using your lens at 35 millimeters or longer. And as you guys know, I really, really prefer 50 millimeters, but for this, I'm gonna be using some 35, some 50, just to have some variety. So all that we're gonna be doing for this is finding a detail in the house, like a light fixture or a specific feature like fireplace, kitchen sink, um, lighting or whatever and we're just gonna be locking that in the center and instead of doing like a normal movement we're gonna be doing a little bit of a roll movement and it creates a cool little effect and one thing you'll probably be able to do in most houses is find some mirror to shoot through and do this movement because I think these shots are already gonna be really interesting and unique but I think adding the mirror to it makes it even more interesting which is fun All right, shot number two. So we are going to actually switch to the wide shots now. So what we're gonna be doing is a push in and roll shot combo movement. So this will be really, really simple, just like your normal push in movement. You're going into a room or something and you're just gonna be walking like normal with a gimbal and rolling at the same time from left to right or right to left, depending on what you prefer and what looks cooler for that specific shot. So really, really simple. You wanna do the roll movement pretty slow. But once again, I'm gonna be picking up the movements a little bit faster than normal because I'm filming at 60 FPS. So that one's really, really simple. Just walk straight forward, keep your composition locked on like normal and add the roll. That's it. All right, the third application that I think is actually really cool is 
what I'm gonna be calling the push up and roll shot. I know it's not a full body workout technique, it is a camera movement. So this one's gonna be totally different than a lot of stuff I normally do, but I'm gonna be tilting the camera straight up pretty much and pushing up really close to a wall. If there's a really cool wall feature like lights or a uh, you know feature fireplace or something, you can have the camera real close to it, shoot super wide even, and have it focused on the wall. So as you go up and roll at the same time, it can just create this really cool kind of FPV look to show the detail of the wall, which is super unique. So for this, in order to get as much distance as possible, you're gonna have to start kind of bent down with your knees and move up slowly and push up and then extend your arms as far as you can to get the biggest movement possible. Once again, if you do this a little bit faster, since we're filming in 60 frames per second, you could slow it down and have plenty of space to work in the edit. And with this kind of a weird movement, it's a lot easier to get that movement smoother if you're going faster. So that's it, this one is a great one for wall features that are interesting, fireplace features that are interesting, looking straight up through trees or something, that could work great too. Maybe there's something outside that's tall and you can get a unique shot. Or even if there's a really interesting ceiling, this can work great too. So that's the three shots. Now let's talk about a few use cases and ways to implement this into your normal videos. So the first thing, I think these are great to mix up a normal video by adding a little bit of diversity, a little bit more creativity somewhere in the video. Uh, it's really easy to overdo it, so definitely don't use too many in one video, but uh, transitioning from one shot to the next, transitioning from like a parallax shot to some spinning drone shot or something, this can um, kind of tie them together really nicely. And basically just add a little bit of a sense of the unknown to your viewer's viewing experience. Since it's not really the type of shot they're gonna be expecting in a real estate video. And I think these are really cool because in normal cinematography, using a Dutch angle, which is like your horizon line is gonna be something like this or this, depending on how messed up the situation is. Um, basically, it signifies that something is wrong and it's not something you really notice as a viewer in normal movies and stuff, but it's a way for the DP to show that something's wrong and mess with your subconscious because you start to uh, everything you're watching starts to feel a little bit off. So for me personally, I would use these very sparingly. Maybe have like one wide shot pushing into a room, doing the little shift. And if it's somewhere in the middle of the video, just to kind of re-engage the viewer and make it a little bit unexpected and more interesting to um, try to keep them watching the video and not know exactly what's going to come next. It's kind of a nice little surprise if it's not overdone. Also, I think using these for detail shots to do something that's a little bit more creative and dramatic is totally fine because those are more artistic and stuff anyways. So going way off axis and doing the FPV stuff is I think totally fine. But for me personally, I probably only use like three of these for a whole video unless there was some super trendy concept and it was just for social media. But anyways, I hope you're liking this series. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I will link another one up here and at the end of the video, if you wanna check out some more trends and some more behind the scenes content that's on this channel already. But that just about wraps up today's video. So I hope this was helpful for you once again. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.